Hi there. Now, this is the first in a set of three videos where I'm going to show you how we differentiate inverse trig functions of sine x, cosine x, and tan x. And all the methods are basically the same. So once I've shown you this video tutorial, you might want to try and experiment with differentiating the other inverse trig functions. Now, you'll notice that what I've got here is this general result, y equals the inverse sine of x over a, a being a positive constant. And if a is 1, we end up with this special result here. If y equals the inverse sine of x, it can be shown that dy by dx equals 1 all over the root of 1 minus x squared. And notice it is not plus or minus, it's just the positive value. I'll go into that in more detail as we go through the tutorial. But this formula is often quoted in formula books. And you'll notice here in the right hand side that I've got two questions, which you might like to try. I'll run through these at the end of the video. You could use this particular formula straight away and just use the chain rule to differentiate these two results. Or, as you'll see, when I show you how to differentiate this, you could pick up on this particular formula for dy by dx and go straight to the answers. OK, so let's start then with the general result. y equals the inverse sine of x over a, a being a positive constant. The first thing I'd want to do is just rearrange this. So I would therefore have the sine of angle y equals x divided by a. And then I'm in a position to differentiate this. If I differentiate this with respect to x, we'll just put that there, differentiate with respect to x, then I've got to use implicit differentiation for differentiating sine y. Differentiate it with respect to y first of all and you get the cosine of the angle y. And then I have to multiply it by dy by dx. And then differentiating x over a, x times 1 over a if you like, just leaves us with 1 over that positive constant a. And now, if I rearrange this for dy by dx, I therefore have dy by dx equals 1 all over a times the cosine of y. Now, I've got the cosine of y, but I need to express this in terms of x. So what I've got to do is turn to an identity. I know that sine y equals x over a, and... I need a connection between sine y and cosine y. Well, we should be familiar with the identity that cos squared y plus sine squared y is 1. And if I rearrange that, I end up with cos y equaling the root of 1 minus sine squared y. And I know that sine y then is x over a, so squaring that gives me x squared over a squared. And if I put this all over a lowest common multiple, a squared, then we get a squared minus x squared all over a squared, and that's all rooted. I can square root the denominator, just leaving me with a, and just leave at the top as the root of a squared minus x squared. So I can substitute this in here as being 1 then all over a times the root then of a squared minus x squared, and that's all over a. The a's cancel out, and that leaves me with my final result, and that is that dy by dx equals 1 then all over the root of a squared minus x squared. And so this is a result then that you need to be familiar with. It really does help, especially when it comes to doing work on integration that we'll be looking at later on. So therefore, if we've got this, this 
equation here, y equals the inverse sine or arc sine x over a, then we end up with dy by dx equaling 1 over the root of a squared minus x squared. Now I did say that why is it not plus or minus? It's just a plus result here. And the reason for that is if we were to look at the graph of y equals the inverse sine or arc sine x over a, a being a positive constant, it's basically going to have this shape. You should be familiar with this. If not, do go back and check out my earlier video tutorials on the graph of the inverse sine of x over a. You'll notice that it's always an increasing function. So the gradient given by dy by dx is always going to be positive. So that's why it's going to be the positive root here. So let's look now at these two questions here. I'll give you a moment if you'd like to have a go just to pause the video and then when you come back I'll run through the solution slowly or you might want to fast forward just to uh, check out your answers. Okay, welcome back then, if you had a go. So for this first one then, y equals 3 times the inverse sine of x over 4. We've got 3 times this function here. So when it comes to differentiating this, then it's going to be 3 times then the result of differentiating the inverse sine of x over 4. And I can compare this to this result here, and I can see that the a is the constant plus 4. So doing this through this result here will be 3 times this result, 3 times 1 all over the root of 4 squared minus x squared. So we're going to end up with 3 then all over the root of 4 squared. I know it's 16, I'll just put it in though just so you can see the working. Okay, because you most probably would just want to go straight in and do 3 then all over the square root of all of 16 minus x squared. Now for number 2 we've got y equals the inverse sine then of 3x over 5. I picked this example just so that we have a slightly different style of the value a. a would be in fact 5 thirds okay, for this example. So we would end up with x all over 5 thirds, which is exactly the same as 3x over 5. So when it comes to differentiating this then, we therefore end up with dy by dx equals 1 all over the root of a squared. Remember, a then is 5 thirds, so we've got, if I square it, it's just going to be 25 over 9 and then minus the x squared. Now we can tidy this up. It's going to equal 1 then all over the square root of and for this set of two terms here I can put it all over 9. So we end up with 25 minus 9x squared and that's all over 9. And now I can take the square root of the 9 here, giving me 3, and then multiply top and bottom by 3. And I end up with, and I'll just rub that out, I end up with this equaling 3 then all over the square root of all of 25 minus 9x squared. Okay, well, I hope that's given you some idea then of how we go about differentiating the inverse sine of some function of x. Now, in the next video, what I'll be doing then is showing you how to differentiate the inverse cosine of some function of x. Very similar to method to what you see here. So you might, in fact, just want to give it a try before watching the video. All right.